In this video, we'll do another curfitting example related to the metabolisms of some animals. Ultimately, we want to predict the metabolism of an animal given its mass. The data we're given is scrambled, so it's hard to gauge any trends in the data just from looking at the table. We're not given any underlying equation, so we don't know how to linearize the data, or if it even needs to be linearized. When presented with a situation like this, we really have no choice but to plot. We first need to load the data. When loaded, you'll see two variables, m and w. m contains the animal's masses, and w contains their metabolisms. We need to sort the data since it's given to us in a scrambled order. The sort function sorts the data in ascending order. The i output is the position of the elements in the original array. For instance, the 4 means the 0.16 was originally the fourth element before it got sorted. This is necessary because we need to sort the w vector in the exact same fashion as the m vector. After the sort, the m sorted vector contains the masses in ascending order, and the w sorted vector contains the corresponding metabolisms. Now we need to plot the sorted data. The first five data points look linear, but the sixth data point would be far from the best fit line passing through the five data points. This suggests the relationship between mass and metabolism is nonlinear. Once again, we're not given the underlying equation, so we just have to plot numerous nonlinear combinations of the sorted data until we stumble across a linear looking plot. From the linearizing nonlinear equations video, we have a list of quantities we can plot. Let's try plotting ln of w versus m. If the plot looks linear, that means we have an exponential model. This is clearly not linear, so we can rule out the exponential model. Let's try a power model instead. This means we have to plot ln of w versus ln of m. This is pretty good. The data is somewhat curvy near the middle, but it's certainly possible that the power law fits the data well. Let's try the reciprocal model. For the reciprocal model, we plot 1 over w versus m. This is also not good. Finally, we can try changing the m sorted to 1 over m sorted as well. This isn't bad either. The last three data points look linear, but the first three look like they would stray far from the best fit line, or vice versa. I would argue that the power law is the best choice of the four we tested, so let's proceed with that. Now that we know we're working with the power law, we reach another crossroads. A power law is obviously nonlinear, so we could linearize the data and perform least squares regression on the transformed data. But the fit function itself has an option to fit power laws directly, so which one should we do? Let's do both options just to compare. We'll start by fitting a power law from the fit function. I call this the direct method since you can directly obtain the curve fit from the fit function without needing to linearize. Afterwards, we'll linearize the data and fit a straight line. Let's go ahead with the direct method. Just as we predicted, the power law seems to fit the data very well. You can ignore the warning in the command window. Power laws require the x values to be positive, and we have some very, very, very small x values that make MATLAB display the warning just as a precaution. Now we need to use the cof values function to extract the curve fit coefficients from the fo1 object. We can also extract the r squared from the gof1 object by accessing the particular field within the gof1 struct. The COFS1 variable contains the curve fit coefficients as a vector, so I just created the P1 and Q1 variables to parse the COFS1 vector. 
we can see that the r squared is incredibly close to 1, which is ideal. Now that we have the Kerfit coefficients and the r squared, we can predict the metabolism at a mass of 200 kilograms. This is pretty easy. All we have to do is pop the mass into the F01 object. The predicted point lies on the best fit line. For a 200 kg animal, we should predict a metabolism of about 164 watts. We did all of this using the direct method. Now let's see if we can replicate these results by linearizing the data. To linearize a power function, take the natural log of both sides. Keep in mind the log function performs the natural log. There's no built-in ln function. We fit a straight line not to the original data, but to the transformed data. We can see that the best fit line seems to fit the transformed data very well. The next step is to extract the Kerfit coefficients. We used the cofvalues function just as before, but now we have some changes. Based on the linearizing nonlinear equations video, we know that the q parameter is just the first Kerfit coefficients, but the second Kerfit coefficient equals the p parameter. To get p, we must exponentiate the second Kerfit coefficient. Once we have p and q, or I should probably say p2 and q2, we can make an anonymous function describing the power law. The r squared of this Kerfit is also incredibly close to 1, which is good. As usual, let's look at the plot. Don't worry about the odd legend text for now, that'll be fixed later. The plot reveals a slight discrepancy between the direct method and the linearized method. This is because the direct method uses a different algorithm than the linearized method. The difference is pretty small, so you don't need to worry about it that much. Let's see what the predicted metabolism will be for the linearized method. To obtain the prediction, I plugged in the natural log of the predicted mass into the FO2 object, then exponentiated the result. I did this because we need to supply the transformed predicted mass to the FO2 object, but the result will also be transformed. The EXP encapsulating the entire inside part of the expression untransforms it. The predicted metabolism using the linearized method is a bit smaller than the predicted metabolism using the direct method. We can see this both from the plot and in the command window. It would be nice to quantify the percent difference between the methods. Let's compute the percent error of the p and q parameters and the predicted metabolism parameters with respect to the direct method. There's virtually no difference in the q parameter, a slight difference in the w predict parameter, and a fairly large difference in the p parameter. That being said, the percent difference in the p parameter is still less than 5%, so that's actually pretty good. Instead of using the percent error, you could also use the vector norm. No matter what error metric you use, you can come to the same conclusion that both methods are meritorious. This concludes the animal metabolism problem. To recap, we sorted an unsorted dataset plotted multiple permutations of the data to determine which nonlinear model best fits the data, and then curve fitted using two methods. Both methods yield relatively similar results, so if a problem doesn't explicitly tell you which method to use, feel free to use the method you find most parsimonious. See you next time.